listening to the Breakdown Podcast, presented by Flea Flicker Highlights. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Breakdown Podcast. I'm your host, Wade Rainey, joined as always by my co-hosts, Pal Patel and Tyler Bush. A bunch of football action this weekend. We're going to be diving into all of that on today's episode. Let's start with college football Saturday. Um... Of course, probably the biggest news was the Bama Ole Miss game. Certainly one of the best games of the day. The Alabama Ole Miss game was definitely one of the best games of the weekend. Um, Definitely the most competitive. It was a back and forth game the whole way through. Uh, We predicted that Bryce Young would play well, respond well to Alabama's uh, troubles over the last few weeks, and I think he did play well. Um, Do you guys see anything from this Alabama team that they can take moving forward, or... I mean, they're just I, they're just not as good as Alabama usually is, and I think that that needs to be something, you know, that they look at, and they just have to get better next year. I mean, they're out of the they're out of the SEC title race; they're not going to be in the playoff. Mm-hmm. They're just not as good as they they're just not as good as they usually are, and uh, and so I think it's all about you know finishing the season out strong, winning that winning that New Year Six bowl game that they're still going to make because they're Alabama, and yeah. that's where the TV money comes from. We all predicted Alabama to win. Uh by around two scores, if not more. They had to come back to beat Ole Miss um, on the road. Uh, we got to give some credit to that Ole Miss side. Is there anything that they can take away going forward? Because they are still in the hunt for a pretty decent bowl game. Um, Yeah, I mean, their defense played better than I think most people thought that they would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they're they're, back, they're, they're running back Judkins. He had, he had like 130 yards. Um, and two tutties. Yeah, I mean they they were double digit dogs at home though. So like, I think that in and of itself is is a positive mm-hmm. from this performance that like you were able to you know play this team. Of course, like you know the moral victories like Jeremy yeah. Pruitt bullshit mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. champions of life and Osbush Jones. That Lane Fuck Kevin, Tennessee dude. That Lane Kevin side has definitely shown more promise though. They've definitely been getting better year after year though. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think that if, like they're beyond that, just like moral victory stage. Because I think that they went into this game legitimately thinking they had a shot um, um, yeah. to win. No, yeah, the past couple of years, uh, Ole Miss has been creeping in, creeping in. I think the program is definitely turning around. Lane Kiffin. Um, I'm excited to see what next year brings with them. Even though this year was good, I I do expect them to improve on what's already a good culture. Yeah, I mean, the SEC dominates the headlines, but the game with the actual most playoff in- implications was out west, the late mm-hmm. night. Uh, Michael Penix Jr., Indiana transfer, throws for over 400 yards, yeah. Yeah. beats Oregon in Eugene. Um, insane performance from the Huskies in, in Phoenix. Yeah, no, we talked about this earlier uh, on our other podcast. This was going to be a quarterback duel, um, and we thought Bo Nix had the edge. I guess not. It was close, but Phoenix with the W this one. Um, no, nothing that Oregon did offensively um, cost them this football game. I think that they played they played well. That rushing attack was on point. They had two guys go for over a hundred yards on the ground. Um, I think Oregon played great offensively, but they really did get exposed defensively. Um, Michael Phoenix, you guys said he had four hundred yards. He also he also had completions to nine or not nine, seven different guys, um, and he was really spreading the ball around. I think they also had two different running backs get ten carries. So Washington was just spreading the ball around, and they were really able to show their versatility in Eugene. Yeah, I also some people uh, forget Bo Nix also had a little injury in this game, and mm-hmm. right after that happened, Washington put up a quick score and forced uh, Oregon to put Ty Thompson out for a play yep. or a drive, whatever. And I don't know. That could have affected the game plan a little bit. Nick's ended up coming back in, but I don't know. You never know. Yeah, I mean, you 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 mentioned quarterback duel, and to be honest, like I'm not so sure. Bo Nix didn't win the duel. Uh, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 59 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Like, yeah. still played very very well, even after um, picking up that knock. So, yeah. I mean, encouraging from him. But yeah, Oregon. No college football playoff. Pac-12 title hopes now out of their hands. Yep. Um, 
this was a bad loss for the Ducks. We said the we said the Pac-12 was about to get crazy, um, and I guess that craziness started a little bit sooner than what we anticipated. But definitely, definitely about to get even crazier out west. Um, USC, UCLA coming up soon. Uh, Utah, Oregon coming up soon. So I think this conference is about to get even crazier. Yeah, next week we got. USC, UCLA, that'll be a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, Trojans still sticking in it. We'll see how far they they'll get. Yeah, for sure. And uh, coming back down to the southeast, another that west spot of the SEC title game is locked up. And for the first time in what feels like, well, I guess since twenty nineteen, Alabama is not coming out of the SEC West. A rare occurrence these days. But it's LSU who scraped out a win. In freezing Arkansas, did you see that they were using? They had the sprinklers on, like with the field all frozen. They did. That LSU I don't know. Like requested hot chocolate on the sideline. I saw they had broth. Who was drinking the broth? Do you think? Who was was it Harold? Was it Harold Perkins' dog? Because no, some, no. some, some, he was drinking something. Dog, that boy is nuts. Yeah, LSU, LSU played uh, great. That game was close the whole way through, though. Um, definitely one of the better games this week if you like defense. Um, but yeah, LSU clinches that SEC title game uh, appearance. They'll likely be playing Georgia. Um, what do you guys? Do you guys have any early predictions for that game right now? Yeah, um, I think Georgia's gonna steamroll them. I just think LSU, as good as a football team they are, they you can't be scraping off a win against Arkansas. I know Arkansas is not as bad as people think, but these football games are way too close. Uh, Georgia's just shown dominance against pretty much everybody in the SEC, including Tennessee uh, and um, Missouri. And, L I mean, who else have they played? Not only is Tyler predicting Georgia to win, he said they're going to steamroll LSU. I just don't think that'll happen. It's an SEC championship game. Anything goes. It'll be, it'll be great. It'll be a great game just because I think both offenses will be able to get it going. Um Familiar opponents, relatively familiar opponents. So yeah, last time, last time, a non-Alabama side represented uh, was represented. It was LSU Georgia, so we'll likely get that rematch as well. I agree I mean, with you about uh, the offense. The offensive or the both offenses are pretty evenly matched in this. You know, Jay, but I think the defense is too strong. I think that. Uh, for LSU, Jaden Daniels is very often the best player on the field um, whenever that LSU offense is, is rolling. So I, I just think that this team has been completely different than what they showed earlier in the year. I wouldn't count them out yet. Yeah, I mean, with this LSU defense, led by the aforementioned Perkins, who was committed to Texas A&M, by the way, which is kind of, which is kind of funny. Uh, the former number one player, our number one linebacker in his class, four sacks, a forced fumble, eight total tackles. I mean... You have stars like that all over the field when you're in the SEC, just like with the recruiting hotbed that it is, mm -hmm. and it's like guys like that that can make it make a difference in a game. They, they're those are the guys that are can earn you a win. They're the they're they're game winners. They're match winners. Um, and I think I disagree as well. I think I think Georgia will win, but I think it'll be I think it'll be a good uh, a good defensive battle. Is what yeah, I'll say. Let's talk about that game day game. As well, though, so, um, talk about the Big Twelve for a little bit. Texas TCU uh, final score was seventeen ten, low scoring affair. Uh, a lot more points came in the second half. It was three nothing for the longest time that game was. Yeah, well into the third. So. I'm, I mean, TCU keeps grinding out wins. You know, uh, it hasn't been pretty for them the last few weeks, but. Mm -hmm. This is a very good win, I think, to go into Austin and knock off and knock off a Texas team that's that's proven tough this year. Yeah, the Texas team prides itself on uh, its ability to score. I think the one one of the few consistencies with this Texas group had been its offense, and uh, I mean Quinn Ewers, he was like seventeen for thirty nine, had one hundred seventy one yards. Um, their star running back, you know, Bijan Robinson, he had uh, twelve carries, twenty nine yards. So I was very impressed with that TCU defensive line, specifically the way they were able to dominate. I, um, I've kind of doubted TCU's uh, status as a top four team. Um, I mean, I understand that they're undefeated, but I just, I just think that uh, they showed a different side um, yeah. on, on Saturday night. No, I agree. Uh, I thought this TCU uh, team was just a team that got into a lot of barn burners, and their defense really surprised me today or yesterday. 
Um, we were at Pigeon Forge this weekend. I was sitting on the porch watching this Texas TCU game. C- couldn't really watch it. It was not that great of a game. TCU was averaging like point three yards per carry in the first half. Like, wasn't very pretty. It was bad. It was bad. So I'd rather like chill, look at the mountains instead of watching that game. I would just yeah. come in, realize it's, nobody scored yet. Go back out. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. Uh, it was definitely not the brand of football that we associate with Big Twelve. With Big Twelve games. No, it's a nice. It's a nice change of pace out there. The Big Twelve. I, the Big Twelve is slowly understanding that you just, you need defense to compete on a national level because we've seen like just years of Big Twelve teams making the playoffs and getting and getting smoked. Not um, Big Twelve teams, just Oklahoma. Oklahoma yeah, makes true. the playoff and then gets smoked. That's what um, happens. Yeah, yeah, I mean elsewhere, elsewhere in the top twenty-five, you had. Tennessee, Ohio State, Michigan taking care of business. Georgia took care of business against Mississippi State. Um, one team that did not take care of business was Kentucky. Uh, and Vanderbilt wins an SEC game for the first time since Reagan was in office. Wow. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> it, it feels like it is, though. Like, yeah, no. it, it, um, but Kentucky loses at home to Vandy. Like, imagine, imagine if South Carolina is losing at home to Vandy. Like, Think, picture yourself in the student section for that game, bro. Like, no, that's yeah. depressing as shit. That's terrible. No, almost I, experience. <laughs> we did almost experience. I left early. I'm kind of glad that, that it was Kentucky, though, because, I mean, the entire state of Kentucky heads to Lexington when they play football or basketball. So, just like, I love seeing all those blue people just <laughs> blue. be sad. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's chill with the, with the colorist remarks, dude. Yeah. Um, no, but fuck Kentucky, dude. Their coach, the Stoops. Stoops was taking shots at Beamer preseason. Yeah, that's right. And now he's lost to Vanderbilt, so that's what you get. Not looking good for Kentucky this season. Um, couple, some embarrassing losses. Uh, we'll see what happens. At home, too. They lost to yeah. us at home. Hey, man. Uh, I don't think Kentucky fans will care too much about the football when basketball season gets going a little bit more. Um, that's their sport anyway, so... I, mean, I was gonna say they can just they can just go right back to saying they don't care about football. Exactly, I don't think yeah, I, it's not it's not that big a deal. It'll Taking a much. quote out of John Calipari's uh, book, we're a basketball school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's what it is. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about some game park football. Uh, we can spend we, don't we can spend, spend, we can spend, we can spend about forty five seconds on this. We look bad. Yeah, no, we look <sighs> god dog awful, bro. I just couldn't watch that game. So depressing. I really thought the Cox would be able to cover this one and it'd be a closer game, but no. Our only our only touchdown slash points came on that on that trick play. Yeah, um, I know. So we, we we effectively got shut out in Gainesville. Uh, we said before the game, our key to the game would be our ability to run the football and stop the running and of then, the football. And then they had three like, hours before kickoff. We found out that Marshawn Lloyd wasn't playing. Yeah, Florida. Florida ended up having three guys run for ninety six yards or more. On this, by the way, <laughs> those were the well. keys, and we straight up lost them. <laughs> now we can't go to school. Hey, bro. I guess I guess uh, Shane Beamer should have called us up and said, "What do what you boys on the Breakdown Podcast think about this Florida game?" <laughs> yeah, Yo, we need you to replace Satterfield. <laughs> yeah, we're hiring the Breakdown Podcast as our offensive coordinator. Get Beamer on here. And we'll ask we'll crowdsource. On we'll crowdsource the offense. Uh, we'll do just that. put up. Polls, someone right? would be my <laughs> someone, would, someone would someone we, we'd be terrible. <laughs> so someone would leak our addresses and we'd get like tomatoes from our house or some shit. I don't know. We'd be yeah. bad. Well, not Tulane, a, <laughs> Tulane also lost. Um, we'll talk about that later. We don't need to. We'll we'll do that in locks of the week. I don't want to do Tulane. Listen, man. This was it. If you had game day, you they're actually lucky they didn't get game day now. If you, listen, it wasn't a bad performance. I, feel like I think that's all we need to say. About I think UCF that. is a good team. That's but all. The fact that we thought that they should have grabbed game day, messing and up. we were excited for them and everything, and they they lost they lost at home to uh, a team that was one time national champs, UCF. That's true, bro. Um, they have a ring and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Do the uh, let's let's talk about some NFL football. We Tulane, had a, Tulane, you messing up my locks the locks the week record. That's all I'm gonna say. They did do you bad. Let's get into let's get into some NFL football. We had a ridiculous slate. Um, yeah, today let's, was awesome. Let's start it. Let's start it with what people are dubbing the game of the year: Buffalo Bills, Minnesota Vikings. I I mean the with the game of the year thing. The the announcer for the game called it the game of the year after like as soon as Patrick Peterson picked off that pass. No. But I like. Are we gonna forget the can Chiefs just, Bills wait, game? Sorry, can we just say for game of the year? Can we just say? Can I just say one thing? 
for Patrick Pearson's second interception yeah. of the day. First no, I love Pat Pete. He's a goat. Um, kind of did got did dirty by the Cardinals, but he's he's shown his uh, how good he is. That's what I'm saying. As man. old he is, like you don't really see too many corners last in the NFL. Patrick yeah. Peterson Patrick is one of them. He is very very old, and he's still playing at a very <laughs> high level. He's at very very old. He's, <laughs> he's talking about like he's bro. Haslam out there, bro. I'm, I'm just think, saying, once you reach like how old is he right now? He's 32, man. Yeah. Calm down. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, for for corner, though, not as old as corner, I thought he was. For I'm corner, though, that's old. Bro. OG number seven from LSU, bro. I'm gonna always show Pat Pete love just because he's a tiger. Um, yeah, I just thought it was, it was great. It was great to see one of those old familiar faces um, balling out because we we don't we don't really talk about Patrick Reason whenever we talk about the best corners of the game, but sometimes. Um, we forget that football is a very, very mental sport as well. And Patrick Peterson showed his experience. Yeah. Stepped up and got, got the Vikings their biggest win of the year so far. Yeah, I no. still – oh, no, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I still think any conversation about this game, though, has to start and end with Justin Jefferson. I mean, I agree. like, what a ridiculous football player, bro. Like, that catch, that catch at the end of the fourth quarter, like – He's, yeah, he's just doing. Like, there's, there's literally no Desmond, words. Desmond King said it best, bro. The ugly ass players are the best ones. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> his grills, his grills are gross. Like he's got the worst. Like Wait, what? Desmond King said that. No, about J- Jay Jettis. Like Desmond King, who plays for the Texans. No, no, no. Uh, the old Marquette King. Sorry. Marquette, Marquette King. King. Like, Marquette King uh, said it about Tyreek Hill after Tyreek Hill made the NFL top 100. This was a few years ago. But it starts with the Tyree Kill part of the documentary, Terry. and it's Marquette King going, and this is how it opens. The ugly ass players are always the best ones, and that's then it funny. cuts to a bunch of Tyree Kill highlights. But yeah, dude, uh, dude Justin that's Jefferson, uh, that's brutal. Why they why they do him like why is, they do him like as that? As ugly as he is, um, he had I'm just gonna say 200 yards. He had 193. I'll call that 200 off 10 catches, averaging 20 yards a catch and a touchdown. He cooked the Bills defense. I was watching this game, and the only man who was open on the field was Justin Jefferson, and he was cooking DBs left and right. He was always open. He that made that House, ridiculous <laughs> fourth down catch. That he actually so the Bills DB kind of had it in his hand. Yeah, Jefferson snatches it out with snatches one hand. it out of this dude's hands just, with one yeah. hand, just, and then yeah. somehow the ball is coming down. Jefferson still got it in one hand. The DB could just go like this to Jefferson's hand and push it down so the ball hits the ground. It's not a catch. Jefferson still has a strength to hold on. I don't know. He he also made that catch at the two-yard line and the, also the catch that got called back from a touchdown. So he almost had two touchdowns. I'd rather I'd rather have Jalen Rieger. That's that's all I'm going to say, bro. <laughs> Me personally, I would rather have Jalen Rieger. No, but... Disgusting. That's a, That was a disgusting decision from, from the Eagles. When you're talking about it's all good. It's all good. that draft and then you're talking about Jefferson, uh, you can't help but think about Stephon Diggs as well. We talked about the perfect trade. The most even trade probably uh, in NFL history as of late. Diggs, 12 catches, 128 yards, it, but it wasn't enough. Josh Allen, he's been struggling in the red zone. I, I don't know what it is. Like, we, talked about, we talked about his injury. Um, that, I mean, that, he has a... He has a, he has a Injury in his elbow of his throwing shoulder of his throwing hand. Um, he's not at one hundred percent. I I admire his competitive spirit. He willed his team. Um, after that after that goal line snap, um, the fact that he was able to lead them down to even force overtime, yeah. I thought was just so impressive. Um, and I think that I think that this game tells us a lot about both teams. But I don't think that either team needs to look at this game negatively. No, positives for the Bills is they were able to get their run game mm-hmm. going. 100%. Positive for the Vikings, they beat the Bills. Negatives, <laughs> negative for the Vikings, I the, uh, the Vikings need to start faster. And negatives for the Bills, their second half uh, defense is horrendous. They were up 24-10. Uh, you can't blow a lead like that. You can't lose at home. Like this. You can't lose at home. I just... Um, I just expected the fact that the Bills were at home for them to just like at at one point I thought that they would eventually just find that extra boost that they needed and kind of put the game away whenever they were up. You know, the game always felt like it was in reach, but I thought that the Bills would put it away and they just couldn't. And I think that that shows a lot about the Vikings because we look at this team and we see the flash of Justin Jefferson, we see the flash of Dalvin Cook, and we look at the defense and 
Uh, I think we forget that this team and this defense, especially, they are gritty, you know, and I think that they really did show that um, this past Sunday. I didn't expect them to do this. I didn't expect to see the side of Minnesota. No, yeah, Minnesota's been coming back from a lot of games. I had red zone on earlier. I had a parlay, Bears money line, Dolphins money line, Bills money line. <laughs> the Bears and Bills games did not end as I hope they would. Um, but that just tells you no lead is safe in the NFL anymore. Uh, the Vikings are one of those teams that have actually won five of their games with mm-hmm. two thirty left in the fourth quarter. So yeah, uh, we we also have to, um, or at least I'd like to really t- talk about how Hawkinson has kind of seamlessly fit into this uh, Vikings offense. We know that he's a weapon, um, but he was their second best receiver. He had seven catches, forty five yards. He had uh, a few. Crucial third down, fourth down yeah. conversions. So Kirk Cousins already trusts him in those uh, in those scenarios, which is great to see. I think that he he's going to provide um, a really unique a really unique uh, threat for the Vikings team. We know what it's like having an elite tight end in the league. Yeah, I mean that's yeah that's what they're there for. Uh, good tight ends, great tight ends are like the best security blankets. Like you need them for those for those third and fourth down opportunities. Theo Theo said this. Um, I think he might have said this in an Instagram comment or something, but he said something about how uh, a receiver having like having dependable receivers makes a quarterback's uh, like just their floor so much higher. Um, and I think that I think that with Kirk Cousins, I think the Vikings have done a great job of giving him plenty of options. You know what I mean? Like I feel like this offense is really constructed around him, and he showed it. Like I thought this was Kirk Cousins. One of his best games, even even with the two interceptions, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, he threw for 357 yards. Uh, he threw the ball 50 times. Yeah. That's, and That's a lot for this Vikings. And team. most importantly... They ran the ball, ball well, too. I mean... Mm-hmm. Most importantly, he put together clutch drives, Yeah, which that's is, I think, the, the biggest step. You know why? It was because this game was at one. You put this game at seven, and the Vikings lose by forty, bro. I'm telling you, man. One p.m. Kirk Cousins. You don't want to play. You don't want to play at one p.m. Kirk Cousins, man. Um. Yeah. So I. Yeah. Great win for the Vikings. They just maintain their stranglehold on the NFC North. Uh, a low key bad NFC North. Um. Packers, of course, got a big win today. Yeah, let, let's but talk team, about let's talk about the NFC North a little bit because I but, think that they're not as bad as they were. Say a month ago. T. Bush mentioned the Bears game. Um, Bet Bears money line. He and I both picked the Bears as well uh, this week. Um, and I have to say, I have, I have mixed feelings uh, about this one. Because just having the Bears be like fun again and play entertaining football and have players that are fun to watch. And, you know, like even though they're losing games, I'm enjoying watching the team. is is such a nice feeling to have. Because like... Last year, you know, I'm at the point where I like I'm turning off Bears games like halfway through the third quarter because I just can't watch it anymore. Like this, that is not this team. Justin Fields, um, definitely still has some things to improve on. He still takes too many sacks, and I would have definitely liked to see him put something together on that final drive. I think that would have looked really good, but he was still really, really good today. Um, and you know, I I do think that. The Bears can take can take some lessons from how the Ravens use Lamar Jackson with him. I think you can I think you can say that at this point you can use Justin Fields like Lamar Jackson. I, he is not as good of a quarterback. That's not what I'm saying, but they they are very similar in terms of the mold of player that they are. I agree. Um, Justin Fields is absolutely tearing it up on the ground, but yeah, like you said. Uh, all those this Bears team is kind of disappointing with their roster. Justin Fields is the bright spot. I love Justin Fields personally. Um, I think he, when he comes to next to start of next season, he could be an MVP candidate. Um, he does need to work on his reads a little bit. It takes him a little too long to get the ball out of his hand. But I saw some improvements in today's game. He was setting his feet as when he got out of the pocket and instead yeah, of see that. started to run. That that one throw, uh, the one that it sticks out to me was the one he had to. Mooney, where he rolled out to the left and reset himself so that, and threw, yeah, and threw, threw across for a single. Field. So, um, yeah, like stuff like that. It's it's nice to see improvements throwing the ball. We know how special of an athlete he is. We know he can get it done on the ground. Mm-hmm. It's then 
getting it like starting to be more consistent passing the ball. No, yeah. The Bears, I mean, speaking of passing, they don't have many pass catchers. Uh Kamat Mooney, four catches each. In a thirty one thirty game, you'd expect uh your leading receiver to have more than four catches. Like, I don't know. That's um, just that's just how elite this Bears run game is. Um and it's 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 that that's the other thing is it's cool to see the Bears be really really good at something on offense that hasn't happened in in a very very long time. Um, so like the fact that they've got the number one rushing attack, it's like it's kind of a, it's a cool point of pride. Yeah. Uh, even though they keep losing football games, but that draft pick keeps getting better. Yeah. No, you're right about that. And I think at the beginning of the season we were talking about this before the podcast. Uh, their defense was their strong suit, not necessarily their offense. Kind of took a 180 turn there they started trading away Rokon Smith some key defensive players but now this offense is rolling uh you you liking the Bears right now what are your thoughts on the Lions um I, well for the Bears I love what you guys are talking about I I think that Justin Fields has developed a lot over just the past month um started with the Patriots game and since then it's been up and up and up um I've I've been a fan of him for, for a while. I, I'm not surprised by what we're seeing. I'm just glad that we're finally seeing it. Um, I think that his development has kind of taken just a little bit longer than I personally expected, but he's he's phenomenal right now. And this Bears team is trending in a very good direction. Um, but if we're going to talk about the Lions, I'd really like to talk about Amon Ross St. Brown. <laughs> he's he nice. is a true nice. wide receiver one in this league. I think that he is what Chase Claypool thinks he is. <laughs> Um, I think that's a, like, I, I just came up with that. I don't know what that No, means, no, that makes sense, like, I mean, mentally, yeah. What do you think is? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, he had, what, 10 catches today, went over another game with 100 yards receiving. Um, he is the heartbeat of this Lions offense, and this Lions offense is the top three scoring offense in the league. So, like, you have to, you have to give him, you have to give him some credit. I think he is, I think he is the second best receiver in this division, in the NFC North. Yeah, no, speaking of the Lions, um, they're not even at full strength either. They had Swift out for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. We all know their defense is a problem, and it has been. Aiden Hutchinson's the bright spot, but like you said, I'm on Ross St. Brown. He was, he was picked to be a breakout candidate this year, and he is showing why he is a wide receiver one in this league. I don't even mind the play of Jared Goff right now. Like, he's playing all right. Like, if you have a good run game, if you have good uh, pass catchers, he can he can play well for you. It's just when it comes to that defense, like, I don't know. It's so bad every game. They were able to pull out this win, but, I mean, I don't see anything positive for the Lions going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to be fair to the Lions if we're going to talk in the same way about the – I mean, I'm a little bit – obviously a little bit biased. But, like, if you're a Lions fan, like, this is – I like, offense is, the hard, is by far the harder side of the ball to be good at. Mm -hmm. in the NFL and so like there's something about your team being bad because of its defense that's like weirdly reassuring because that's what's happening with the Bears right now yeah um and I think if you're a Bears fan if you're a Lions fan this season is actually going like very very well for you because you're seeing good impressive strides on the offensive side of the ball from well from the Lions not like a young quarterback but Jared Goff has been playing like you know better than he has in the past and, you know, you're losing games, so you're going to be able to add another high-level piece if you draft well um, in the spring. Yeah, no. Um, this NFC North is getting tight, or, t or not tight. It's getting very, like, loose, in my opinion. Uh, the opposite of tight. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the Vikings, the Vikings are running away with it. Um, but let's talk about the Packers, because they pulled off a very impressive win today. Um like Aaron Rodgers is like my boogeyman, uh, dude. Like, can I just? I, 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 have a point. I always think that they'll turn it around, and I still think that the Packers might. They always do, bro. I think you're scarred by Aaron Rodgers. I know I am. No, <laughs> it, it, it's true. That. Certainly, the Packers are good. I did pick them. On the, I saw this one coming. I, I didn't uh, say that. Cowboys, bro. That was a that was a that was a, that was I a despicable that was a despicable ending from the. I think Dallas I figured Cowboys. out what it is um, about the Cowboys. I think that with Dak missing so many games early in the year. They're just having, literally, they're just having chemistry issues right now, and they'll figure it out. I'm not worried about the Cowboys, um, because I think that, A, look at their schedule. They don't need the, they're not, you know, they have time to figure it out, especially if they keep 
um, winning football games. Like they have been, you know, excluding just this past weekend. Like they've been on a they've been on a pretty good stretch this entire year, considering their QB one has missed so many games. And I think that as he plays more games, they'll just keep getting better. Like playing a quarter in an NFL game is like a big deal. And he's missed five out of their available like 10, 11 games. Like he has not been there to figure it out with this with this group of guys. And so the more they play together, I think they'll just keep getting better. And I think that that's what you can draw up most of Dallas's problems with right now, offensively at least. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I have a lot of confidence in this Dallas team. Their defense has shown why they're one of the best in the league. I think today uh, the case just was the turnovers. Stack had a couple bad interceptions. Aaron Rodgers, none. And what we've been seeing lately is Aaron Rodgers throw the ball to the defenders a lot recently. Um, many picks, but not this one. He had a QBR of 146. He played really well. And the Packers kind of played to their uh, identity um, as they came in going into the season. Aaron Jones, 138 yards. A.J. Dillon added 65. Um, Christian Watson, a big day. Uh, he's kind of emerging as their wide receiver one. I know Ellen Lazard is in that slot right now, but Watson's ceiling is way higher. I think team. they know that. Yeah. I think they know that mm-hmm. as well. Like the way they the way they give um, C.J. Watson a share of targets and the routes that he runs, they know that he's their primary target, and he's Aaron Rodgers' first read a lot of the time. So that is actually awesome to see this performances because this is a guy that was struggling, and I feel like uh, it gets tough hearing all that noise. Um, especially with the way the Packers, is, their turmoil has been subject to a lot of national criticism. Yeah. And so for a rookie, it's it's a lot of pressure, and, and he's been asked to make plays, and you know, and it's hard because you're a rookie. So I, I just think it's yeah. great to see this. It's also hard when your quarterback airs you out to the media all the time like an asshole because Aaron Rodgers is a dick. So there's yes. also that. But Can I say <laughs> um, one more thing real quick? Uh, the NFC East – has a eight and three record against the NFC North this year. The only the NFC North is terrible. That's what I'm saying. So I, I, you were talking about the Lions and the and the Bears and the positives from the season. You also have to remember that they just happen to get hit with a brick wall of a division that they have to play because that's true. They, we still like, got the Giants. Not, like you're the Lions, you're the Lions, and you have to play the Eagles who have eight wins, the Giants and the Cowboys who both have at least six wins. Like and like Washington beat Green Bay like not too long ago. Washington yeah. beat Chicago earlier this year. So, um, I mean, even the worst team in the NFC is, is, is good. And yeah, the commanders, the commanders have been looking better ever since Heineke took over as well. We, we knew that, right? The Heineke yeah, but, makes but, that team better. Yeah, but it just, it, just makes, it just makes the NFC East uh, an, even deeper, an even deeper division. Yeah. But the NFC, yeah, the, both, both the Eafs, both, both, both of the Easts, very strong, very strong this year mm-hmm. um, on both sure. sides. Um, you mentioned the... Uh, You mentioned the NFC East, uh, the Giants, the Giants, the Giants, the Giants. They win again, but once again, it's like meh. The worst seven and two team I've ever seen. No, yeah, I mean, oh God, this Giants team is like I don't know. I really don't know because Daniel Jones even play bad, like he didn't, but he um, didn't play. He doesn't look like he's playing good either. That's the thing. I think Daniel Jones. He does his job, but again, I mean, Saquon Barkley ran the ball thirty-five Barkley, times. That's what I was about to say. I said, but then whenever your whenever your team's offense relies on Saquon so much um, as a quarterback, I mean, your job is to kind of half of your job is to just turn around and hand the ball over. I think takeaways from this game was I think although Saquon had a good game, although Daniel Jones managed the game well, their defense was. Uh, Definitely the star in this one because they had a huge couple stops in the red zone. Davis Mills, a uh, couple interceptions, or one interception there in the red zone. That was kind of the turning point of the game. I didn't really see any juice from the Texans after that. That happened in the beginning of the fourth quarter, and their defense just held them in at the rest of the time. I mean, Davis Mills had a, an all right game in the air, but like, like I said, I think the heart and soul of this Giants team is their defense. It's going to get them through the rest of the season. I'm not too sure about their offense, though. We've talked about we've talked about the Giants a lot. Um, I'm not going to like tear into Daniel Jones. I just think that he he doesn't 
he doesn't go beyond his job. You know what I mean? Like doing the bare minimum is not like you cannot have a job. I don't care what you do, where you expect to to be given like respect or just be like appreciated or something. If you do literally what is just the bare minimum, like you have to offer something else. And he does that by running the ball, but he hasn't been as effective of a runner, of a runner this year as last year and the year before that. Um, it's not like it's lost or anything. Maybe that's just the fact that he also has his star running back playing beside him for longer than half a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's certainly other factors that have affected this, and it's not completely in Daniel Jones' hands. But again, he has been given such a unique opportunity because the Giants are so patient with him. <laughs> um, and he's had, he's had different head coaches. He's had, to, he's had to learn a few different playbooks now, and he hasn't had the right playmakers around him. But again... Um, I just want to see something more out of him. You know what I mean? I just want to see something that I can say, like, okay, yeah, like this is a classic Daniel Jones performance, and I, I, I just don't see anything truly inspiring from him. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see more from the Giants when they play Detroit next week. I think that will show us their ceiling offensively. I know Detroit's defense. If they can't, is really if bad. they can't fucking score thirty points on the Lions, bro, oh my goodness, you mm-hmm. cannot, you cannot seriously try and tell me that this Giants team. Is a playoff like contender? No, like, they got a rough stretch well. after that too. Uh, Dallas, Washington, Philly, Washington, Minnesota, Indy, Philly. So, <laughs> good luck for the Giants. They're gonna beat. They're gonna beat. The, they're gonna beat the Colts, and that's it, bro. They're gonna take like. They're gonna go one six. I, know, I think bro. they split with the Commanders. Yeah, I mean yeah. they're be- they're a better team than Washington. But, but I don't think Washington's that bad either, to be honest. I mean the NFC East is Washington. Strong. What was it two years ago or last year? They made a run towards. It was last year. They made a run. Yeah, they down to the playoffs. Yeah. Taylor Heineke nearly yeah. took down the Buccaneers. Exactly. Really. So. Beat Brady. Mm, not really. Speaking of Brady, <laughs> big win. I'll talk about that game. The Bucks in Munich. The Bucks. I think now you have to say are far and away the NFC South favorites. Oh my goodness, the Falcons. Falcons, once again, Dude. like how like is Desmond Ritter like how bad do you think Desmond Ritter is? I no the Falcons are a good enough team to win that game with Marcus Mariota. I don't know they did not run the ball like they it was raining w- a lot. Wanted to. It was raining a lot, and it they was, kept passing it. That's I don't like, get it. This is a team. This is a team. We sat here and talked about how well they run the ball. It's raining a ridiculous amount, and this team decides <laughs> you know what would be great. Marcus Mar- the fucking ball right now. Yeah, it's no, wrong. Marcus Mariota is just running to the sideline and chucking interceptions they when also, they could be giving the ball to Cordero Patterson. They've uh, had they've had two start running back. They've had two years of Kyle Pitts and still don't know how to use him. Like they they don't know what they want to do with him, which is just absolutely embarrassing. Well, they can't throw the football because they have Marcus Mariota playing quarterback. Well, well, they don't need to throw it. Well, here's the thing: they were trying to throw it last game and it were didn't players, work. When they their were, run game is their strength, and the Panthers. Are a bad defense. Like I, uh, I don't know. There were there were three there were three different plays. Um, just Thursday night where Marcus Mariota has like released the ball already, and Kyle Pitts is like still running his route. Yeah. <laughs> like, there was one. There was one where the ball hit him like in the back of his name. Like he, if he had just turned around, he could have caught it. There was another one where the ball s- just sailed over. It. Like I'm talking like sail, just like right past his head. He didn't even turn around until the ball was on the ground. Like. I'm telling you, there's just something off. Um, just it looks like there's something off chemistry wise. Like, I, I just can't. I just don't. Think is it? Do you think it's it. Pitts or do you think it's the scheme? I think it's the scheme. I just, I just don't think they know how to use him. Just because he's such a such a unique player, um, coming out of college, like even Florida didn't know how to use him for a while. Yeah, you know no. what I mean. Like, you surprised like his uh, last season there. Um, I thought everybody was saying he's a generational player. I thought he had a decent rookie season. This year, I don't know. He's he, did. he did. The, the last year, the touchdown production just wasn't there, but he but he had a ton of yards. That's what. It, this year, he doesn't have that either. Yeah, um, uh, but that wasn't even the game I wanted that, to talk. I about. know. <laughs> we'll get we'll get back into it. We just had to talk about that Falcons game just because that we didn't expect that at no, all. Not there at all. was that hilarious at picture all. of Mark Mariota that one play yeah. where. <laughs> He threw the ball while he was already down, like to end the game. He's like, he's like, he's his like, arms all the way up there. Down, his like shoulders on the ground already. He's like throwing the ball. It was, it was, his it was eyes funny. were closed. And he just threw the ball and ended up being a pick six, but it didn't count. It was pretty. Em- it was pretty emblematic down. of his play as a whole. All right, but let's talk about that Munich game. Bucks, Bucks. Uh, I, I want to say yeah, in Germany. I want to use the word dominated because although I did not watch the entire game live, as I was keeping up with it, I felt like. Um, Seattle just couldn't get anything going. They had a slow start. 
Um, the Bucks had a slow start, but just a little bit quicker of a start, I guess. Um, and they were able to kind of hold on the whole game. The The Seahawks did not look threatening at all. No, yeah. Um, I think one name, if you're going to remember this game, Rashad White. 105 yards on the ground, averaging 4.8 per carry. This is a running back that Tom Brady needed the production from. Uh, Fournette. I like this duo they got going on with Fournette and White. Um, Fournette, Fournette might be missing some time as well, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see a lot more of White um, in the next next few weeks. He has definitely had an increased role, but this will be the first time he's featured. No, yeah, and you're seeing Godwin getting utilized a lot more than because he was hurt at the beginning of the season, and we all we all knew this receiving core was injured, mm-hmm. and now we're starting to see a healthy uh, Tampa Bay offense. O line is improving. Obviously, they ran the ball pretty well against a, a middle of the pack defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm the Seahawks, I like how Geno Smith played. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Run I game was rough. You know, when not, you only run for 39 yards, it's hard to win a football game. Exactly. It, well, we know that the Bucks defensive line is a strength of that team. I, I wasn't too surprised about that. I do want to say though, if you're the Seahawks, you do not press the panic button at all. You have the Raiders. Then the Rams and then the Panthers. Yeah, as I, your next three games, like they they have time to right the ship and figure it out. Um, we we know what Kenneth Walker can do. This is his first like bad game. Yeah, since he's been the starter. Uh, I, I I still think that I still think that this Bucks team has work to do. But now they're 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 at five hundred and they can they can like kind of press a restart button. You know no. what I mean? Like I think their season now has uh, has new life because. They they won. They finally like they, they just they're on a they're on a two game win streak now and they have the Browns next week. Um, I think that we have officially turned the page in the season of the Bucks. I think we can look past the whole Tom Brady divorce. Uh, he went to the wedding. He's not practicing on Monday. Like we can we can move off. We can move past. All yeah, that. and it only took two weeks from us uh, going full panic mode to leading the NFC South. Well, hey, well, kind of uh, ridiculous. Well. well but. They, I still don't think the Buccaneers are going to do anything. There it is. I was, that's what I was going to say. They only they've scored thirty. They've scored thirty seven points in the past two weeks. I do um, think they will win the NFC South. Yeah, because the Falcons fucking suck. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like the, the Panthers suck. The Saints suck. Um, the Saints lost to the Steelers in another pretty dull Saints game. Yeah, I was bad. Yeah, um, no, I think a quarterback change there might be coming soon. I would agree before sure. before we get off the Seahawks Bucks game, I feel like sometimes these NFL games in Europe we don't really focus on the fact that like these people like never see American football. Tom Brady called this game, which was in mm-hmm. uh, at Alliance Arena in Munich. He called it one of the great football experiences he's ever had. That's a guy who's won seven Super Bowls. So for him to say that about um, he's a guy that's won a football game, an NFL game in four different countries. Now. Yeah. yeah. So Undefeated. for him to for him to say that about like it, the atmosphere in in Germany at an NFL game, it, that's pretty cool to see because like you know, the NFL is, is definitely one of they're definitely the last American sports league to truly like globalize. Um, they made like attempts, but you know, football occupies the space that soccer does everywhere else in the world. It's hard to you know fit that like fit that together uh no yeah talk, talking about the atmosphere uh there were three million ticket requests for this game and the stadium only holds eighty thousand. so that's just sh- sh- only eighty thousand. Co- yeah that's, that's bigger than any nfl stadium or not any but like i'm most. i'm just talking about like that's just how many people want to see tom brady play oh, um I don't in, know. I, well, nfl in and bro come on thing. yeah oh dude i don't know man like like Tom, Tom Brady is international, I understand that, but I'm still saying that I think that even if even if there was uh, the Cowboys Packers game, I think there would have been three million ticket requests. It could have been the Vikings well, the Bills Cowboys. Game. That the Cowboys is also a bad example because they're the Cowboys. Uh, well, the Bills Viking game is. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think the Germany, I, don't, I think Tom Brady is is one of the few NFL players who is no is can you can actually right, say well, he's known. Worldwide. They're gonna come back. They're gonna so come whether back. it's two million or three million, I think Tom Brady helps that boost a little bit. They're gonna come oh, back sure, in but. Munich next year, the year after that, and the year after that, Roger Goodell announced that they will be playing a Munich game um, every year. So we'll get to compare and see if. What I think is. I think that Germany, um, like I mean, you've been seeing some guys from Germany, you know, come and at least attempt to make it in the NFL. 
Um, they do so have a league like, in Germany. Yeah, they, and they've got Germany's one in Italy. The, Germany and Italy. Germany um, is the third two. biggest uh, American footballing country in the world, by the way, after America and Canada. I don't know if you guys know. Like, it, like football has been in Germany for about 30 to 40. Just because there's such a heavy American presence in Germany, you have to remember yeah. that. So football has yeah. been in Germany for about 60 to 70 years now. Um, the people, like, it's not mainstream, but, like, people are familiar with it. Kind of like how we're familiar with rugby. Like, it's like that. Like, they know what football is. There have been... German NFL players. Um, there are a lot of German people playing in the Canadian Football League. Like Germany, I think deserves more respect as a like football. Like there's a reason that Germany was the first country they went to outside of Mexico and England. When sure. do you when do you think the NFL expands into another country? Um, so either you know could be could be Canada, could be Mexico, could be Europe. I don't think it would be Europe. The travel is the travel is too bad. But is I could certainly see Canada or Mexico sometime soon. No, definitely Canada. Toronto. I, I don't really see why. Yeah. Toronto little Toronto game, that'd be pretty cool. Chad Oco, Chad Oco, Ocho Cinco. Um I was watching a video of his this past week. He was talking about his experience playing in the CFL, the Canadian Football League. He was playing up with Sat Sas I don't know how to say Saskatchewan. It. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, yeah. Yeah, he was playing there, and he was talking about how a lot of those guys, he said, were at the same level as the NFL guys, right? This is the guy that dominated in the NFL. And yeah, no, saying, and you've seen CFL coaches make the transfer over to NFL, too. Yeah, like um, Mark Trestman. That worked out really, really, really well. And Matt Nagy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was Matt Nagy, CFL guy, too. I didn't even yeah, know he that. Was. Oh, my God. Why the Bears aren't Canadian? Because they're sure. right there, bro. They're right there. They're, they're not. Crazy. I'm pretty sure he was like the head coach of the Edmonton Argonauts or something like that. Mark Trestman has won a lot of great cups. That I know. Hey, man. I, I just think, that, I, I just think it's awesome seeing football on the international stage and even being able to talk about this. Like People did not talk about football being played in other countries like 15 years ago. So, I know. Yeah. Know. Good, good truly, for the, good, truly globalizing the game. Good for the NFL, which is not something that you will hear me say very often. Yeah, um, uh, but I, not to compare anything, the NBA is also talking about adding a Mexico City team. We don't have to talk about that too long. I just want to say that that's kind of cool. That would be fire. They're like they're like they're like actually doing this. I'd hate to be stuff. on that team just for travel purposes. But dude, you get to live in Mexico City. Hey, that's not the U.S. though. I'm just saying, it's like Mexico City. It's gonna nice. be. I want it'd be cool expanding six but seven like, months out of the year. Bro, if I get if I get paid to live in to live in a to Mexico in, City is not Cancun though. Pretty close to Cancun. <laughs> you got two short, days short, off. short trip, short trip after you get knocked out of the playoffs, dog. Yeah, bro, um, exactly. Yeah. Cabo. You can take your personal car, bro. You can join Zeke. <laughs> All right, back to the NFL. Um, let's talk some Tua, because I had a discussion with Pal. Um, so, okay, listen, man. Tua is a good quarterback, right? I, I, I will say that. Mm-hmm. However. Some of this to a praise, I believe, is a little bit disingenuous. For example, I saw a tweet that was highlighting the fact that Tua now faces the least man coverage uh, in the NFL this year um, after facing a lot last year um, and how he's like dominating man coverage. Um, it did not mention, however, that last year one Patrick Mahomes faced the uh, one of the lowest rates of man coverage um in the NFL and now faces much much a much much higher percentage of man on plays so i wonder mm-hmm. what the common denominator is for um they're not wanting to play man coverage against the against the dolphins can i tell you I my what? offensive player of the year <laughs> You got Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill, man. He's, yeah. he's the truth. Who would have thought that having not one, but two guys who are faster than literally everybody else on the field is a recipe Bro, for offensive don't success? Don't forget Mostert, too. And, yeah, and Mostert, Mostert's faster than <laughs> Whoa, most guys, too. There's another name we also got to talk about. This man had uh, 100-plus yards on him. Jeff Wilson, man. Jeff, Jeff Wilson, Wilson, bro. Theo, Theo was – Theo, we had Theo on. He, he was He was happy. He was happy. He was like, Jeff Wilson's out of here. That's good. Uh, dude, yeah. All 17, time, seven, take, bro. 17 carries for 119 no, no, no. yards. That, Clip that one. Bro. I'm pretty – no, I thought he said that he wanted to see him succeed elsewhere because he is a good enough starting back, just not oh, for the Niners. Well, then unclip that, I guess. I don't know. Respect to Theo if he got it right. Uh, I think that that's cool, though, because I don't, I don't personally – um, expect Miami to lean on their sh- rushing attack very much, uh, but they but they had to at some point during this game. Like yeah. Cleveland, um, especially in the first half, looked very competitive. Jacoby Brissett was very comfortable in the pocket, um, 
And like this Browns team, they run the football as good as anyone else. Um, and and they, you know, they were giving the, the Dolphins a run for their money for a good part of this game uh, before Miami pulled away. I will say, I just kind of, I kind of discredited Tua um, with the Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill stuff. So I'm going to come back and give him some props. Spread the ball around today. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's eight different receivers. No one had more than four catches, and he threw for almost 300 yards. So Tyreek Hill had five. Five. Tyreek Hill had five. Um, yeah, but so yeah, Tua played but, great I mean, today. Four, but I want four players with four plus receptions. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tua, Tua, five, actually. Tua very good today, but I do want everyone to understand how big of an impact like those two guys make on an offense. Waddle, I think Waddle we Hill. No, yeah, I mean, I think coming into this season, we I thought Miami's offense was going to be crazy, and it is. Uh, I think we definitely need to give some more credit to Jalen Waddle than he gets. He put up the most yards today. He has the coolest celebration. He does. He does. What does I he, love what the does waddle. He do? Oh, the waddle, waddle yeah. Oh, waddle, come on. <laughs> That's my bad. But I think Tua is actually uh, as good as Waddle and Hill is. I think Tua is the leading MVP candidate as of Bro, right this now. one switched up so quick. <laughs> I said MVP Josh Allen. Give me a fist bump. I no, know. Like, I like it. I like the Tua. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Josh I'm, Allen's had like one of the like three worst weeks of his career. I'm not honestly. the one. Like I'm not saying that. Like my MVP candidate now more than ever is Jalen Hurts, bro. <laughs> He wouldn't lose, bro. He hasn't lost. Just Josh Allen has not lost. I just more, think way more. Tua's first in QBR. He's he's yes. going to be like top five in touchdowns after this game. He's uh, he's he's likely going to be top three in yards. His completion percentage completion is percentage also is probably going to be top three as well. He is like like I know that we are like clowning Tyreek for saying this, but Tua is a statistically very, very, yeah very active quarterback, if not the best. Mm-hmm. Um, um, let's talk about Tyreek Hill's former team. Yeah, oh like, wait, before we do that, I just want to. Put a mention. I just want to put a stamp on Tyreek Hill as maybe the most entertaining guy to watch in the NFL. His on-field and he's hilarious. Like what he did on that Jeff Wilson touchdown. Like he's he, oh, yeah. he. It, it's so awesome to see a guy having having fun out there like that, and then combine him, combine that with him being like the fastest human being on planet Earth. You've got like the most entertaining player do, in the NFL. Do you know like the instant replay in like 2K or like yeah. Madden where you can just zoom around? Mm-hmm. Tyreek is literally that camera. He can just run with you and go wherever you <laughs> want. Like, that's literally what happened on that Jeff Wilson. And we, and we've seen it before. We've seen him, like, just, like, just for fun, like, catch up to his teammates, like, on long touchdown runs just because yeah, no, he can. As a defender's, like, 20 yards back. <laughs> I know. Like he, that man is awesome. crazy. Uh, I also, I was going to say something, and I think I forgot. Damn. Tyreek Hill. It was something about Tyreek Chiefs. Yeah, we'll go. We'll move on to the Chiefs. We'll move on to the Chiefs. Um, yeah, I think that this was a game that kind of felt like a foregone conclusion at the beginning of this week. I remember Tyree Kill. Oh. One thing I love about him. One thing I love about him, man. I, I always tell Wade this. If I was a professional athlete in any sport and I could do this, if my celebration, go-to celebration, I would just start doing gymnastic shit, bro. <laughs> like, I, one thing I love about Tyree Kill is, like, his energy and stuff, but the fact that he scores a touchdown, like, He's about to do a flip or something crazy, bro. Yeah. He's about to do a somersault or something wild. <laughs> Christian Watson did a yeah. flip today. Yeah. I love seeing it, bro. It was like, I thought he was going to do the Lambo leap for his first touchdown, but he did the, and I was like, I like it, bro. Yeah, I, I, know. Know. I was a fan. But anyway, let's talk about that Chiefs game. Yeah, um, it's a game that felt like a foregone conclusion, conclusion at the beginning of the, yeah. uh, beginning of the week. Um, but I think and that at both, the beginning of the game, honestly. Both, both, teams have, uh, both teams have positives um, to take away, to take away though, I, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, the Chiefs, once again, dominant offensively. Pat Mahomes, like, we're going to get to the point where we don't appreciate Pat Mahomes because he's going to have been so good for so long. Just, like, putting up performances like this. Um, over 300 yards once again, four touchdowns. Um, I mean, he's him. He's him. We don't I've, – I've, the Chiefs have gone under the radar, I think, this year a little bit. Clyde Edwards-Alaire had uh, zero snaps today, by the way. I started him in fantasy and everything. <laughs> Kadarius Tony, very good game. Uh, yeah, he had his first touchdown. Mm-hmm. I think this Chiefs team is looking even scarier now. They did lose Juju to a pretty dirty hit. You see that? Yeah, that was uh, – like, prayers up. Like, that was, yeah. that was bad. He was struggling. Um, he was, he was catching on, too. I think in the past couple of weeks, he's leading the team in yards. Um, Kelsey, another – X factor in this game, obviously he's gonna came up big in the second half for him as well. He's gonna be he's gonna be there every game. He's gonna get at least five catches, at least seventy yards, and most likely a touchdown every week. I mean, we we're talking about how good Tyree Kill is. Um, mm-hmm. 
The Chiefs lost him, and they've been struggling on offense this year. So what do they do? They go out and get literally the closest thing to Tyreek Hill <laughs> you can get, and then and then they end up with Kadarius Tony. I I I actually think that the Dolphins have the closest thing to Tyreek Hill you can get also, but Kadarius Tony is not like a bad. Waddle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a fair take. But Kadarius Tony is pretty. Pretty close, uh, like the same build, same kind of skill set, um, same strengths. What do you guys think with Kader Stoney? What's his What's his ceiling? I mean, I think you saw like you saw some disciplinary issues, mm-hmm. some some mental some saw mental that issues at Florida, yeah. uh, at Florida and in New York. Yeah. Um, but I think Andy Andy Reid is one of those coaches that can take those guys and and make them work. He did um, it in Philadelphia. Did it in Philadelphia. He did it with Josh Gordon. He's, he's, Gordon, he's, yeah. he's, he's done it in Kansas City. Um, so if if Kadarius Tony, I mean, everyone's everyone's known this. This isn't a new thing for Kadarius Tony to say that if he can keep his head screwed on straight, then he has all the talent in the world to be a great football player. That's been a, that's been a yeah. consistent theme for him. Um, and especially, you know, when you've got an offense that's as loaded as the Chiefs is now, uh, especially once you slot him in with a quarterback as good as Pat Mahomes, um, the sky's the limit. Pat I think Mahomes he be a very is still good playing at an MVP level. I feel like yeah. compared to a lot of other people that talk NFL and stuff, we talk about Patrick Mahomes less. Yes, I agree with that. And um, I think that's because you two happen to be fans of teams that have MVP candidates as well. Literally the only two other MVP candidates as well. As, Tua. As well. Now, yeah. Oh, for sure. Tua has to be mentioned now. But, like, the... The three, like, still the three best teams going into this week, at least, were, like, those Chiefs-Eagles. I yeah, think. I think now, Min- now Minnesota has to be there. Now you have but, to add Minnesota and Miami But there. Kirk Cousins is not, I don't think it's, like, because, you 1 know. 1 p.m. Kirk Cousins. Is, is Justin there. Jefferson an MVP candidate? Oh, great question. He should be. I think he is. Oh, I think he's a player of the year. I, I think, because, like, <coughs> like when, when you think, like, when you think of, like, okay, who's who's mainly responsible for the success of the, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Eagles. You, everyone knows what the answer to the question is going to be. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. With the Vikings, who is uh, I was going to say the wrong game for Philly. But Jalen Hurts is a big part of that. Jalen Hurts is a huge part of it. I was, I was, I was trying, to trying to see if that triggered you a little bit. I could tell. Let's talk about Justin Jefferson. He has 1,000 yards on the season already. Um, he has 69 catches. Four touchdowns. I expected him to have more touchdowns. Like I was looking at that number for a second, and I'm like, just four. But like, I mean, four touchdowns. Is, it's that's so impressive. Um, no, he's touchdowns gotten, kind of are volatile though. So. He's gotten. I was gonna say he's gotten two touchdowns in the past two weeks, um, and then the other two came during the first game of the year. So no, he had a little dry yeah. spell there. But look at the yards, man. He he has he has had a hundred yards in every game except for three. And in one of those, he had 98. So, I mean, like, you didn't give that to him, you know what I mean? Um, the only – so, Detroit was his worst game. Um, Detroit and Philly were his two worst games. Both of them were at the beginning of the year. So there is only Slam better. locked him up that game, I remember. Yeah, that was um, I mean, we kicked their ass that game. You did, yeah. But, uh, no, Justin Jefferson, man. He deserves, he, he deserves and, it. And he's got, he's got those wow moments that you need. He deserves like, the praise, not the trophy. I mean, yeah, just, but I, I think you absolutely, absolutely have to put him up there with the MVP candidates. Um, what he does, what he does is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. All right. I thought it was a big day in general for receivers. Uh, he does that with Kirk Cousins as his quarterback, might I add. It's true. Um, it's true. And Kirk Cousins, you know, had a weird game, but like I thought he played well in general. Mm-hmm. Um, he just... Toss it up to Jefferson and get you a little forty yards. Every he will. Other like he, the crazy thing is, is that he, he will. He will. Yeah. See, we we mentioned Jalen Hurts. That's the Monday game. Uh, Eagles Commanders. This, for me at least, looking at this has a trap game written all over it. I know you. I know you said. I know you said trap game last week. Yeah. But this, I think, this is this is, a, this, this is even more of a trap game. It's a divisional game. I think. Or wait. last week they were on a bye. Two weeks ago. How about the Eagles? Yeah, when they played the uh, when they played the Washington Texans. No, no, no. They, that I, was said that, I said that this Washington game was a trap game. I completely see it, bro. I respect this Washington team so much. Um, like apart from Heineke, like they have they have like scary Terry. Like that boy is scary yeah, to he's me, nice. bro. He, he's he, nice. He's 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 had some good days against the Eagles. Um, Their connection is different. I mean, you saw with Carson Wentz in the pocket. They also have the, the running back by committee thing going on right now. Antonio Gibson at the backfield catching passes, and then Brian Robinson running the football. Um, they they have they have the makings for a Monday night upset. 
you know what I mean? Divisional game. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be cold. So pretty sure it's. I think it'll be one of those um, low scoring games. I expect the Eagles to like get out to the lead early, kind of hold on to it, um, like they tend to do. I don't think that they'll win by more than ten though. I yeah no I like the Commanders to cover the spread in this one. Uh, you mentioned a good Commanders group. They're actually. Fourth in rushing scores given up and tenth in rushing yards. This Eagles team is known for rushing the ball, so that could be a challenge for Philly coming out early. Um, also, Darren Payne, Jonathan Allen, those two are wreaking havoc on their line. They know how to draw double teams, and since and, 2018, Payne has 35 tackles, and five and a half sacks, 10 tackles for loss. And Chase Young might be coming back That's huge. for this game. Which and, is another just mm-hmm. you slide in an all pro level piece to an already very good defensive line. Yeah, and that's all scripted, bro. Put the money <laughs> on the Commanders money line, bro. Take your bread. Take I should have put money line on the Chargers, bro. It was like plus three ten right now, and they're up what? Right now, 14, as we three. as we record this, they're up 14, 14 three. Oh, I did not expect that, by the way. Yeah, we'll have more talk on the uh, on the Sunday night game um, on Wednesday, but the Chargers are up right now. Um, I, didn't I know. Expect, I know. I picked the 49ers. So I was this gonna say. Rough. I don't think we expected to to see a San Diego like San, defensive. San Diego. Uh, or sorry, L A. I don't want to say L A. Yeah, I, I don't think no, we expected to see the Chargers defense play so well. That, that's I would just. I, I would just like to keep calling them the San Diego Chargers as well. To be honest, we've been it's saying on, San Diego a lot because the Padres are good again. So like, we, you know what I mean. San Kodak, Diego's a good. You know, Kodak Stanley. Black didn't know the Chargers moved to L A. <laughs> That like Call doesn't that doesn't class. doesn't surprise me really to be honest. <laughs> How much NFL do you think Mike like watches? He watches um, Lamar Jackson. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> speaking speaking of uh, us getting our picks wrong, T. Bush. Why don't we go over that? Um, yeah, no. For the so, first week. Not all of us got our picks wrong. Okay, Last yeah, episode, um, we made our picks at the end. Uh, each Sunday game, except this last one, Chargers Niners, because uh, we're currently recording during the game. We'll start off with me and Wade. Um, an average week, I would say, above five hundred for Wade, six and five. For mm-hmm. me, I was at five and six. Hell, I don't know if this will ever happen again. Ten and one. Ten and one. Nutty. Some guys. nutty picks. Some nutty picks, including. I picked the Packers. Pick the Packers. I picked the Cardinals. Pick the Cardinals. You picked the Colts. Colts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, the Colts, Colts spread was my lock of the week, but I also picked them, and I, I like they played. And good. both those hit. Jonathan shout out, really good. shout out to Jeff Saturday as well. He happy, leads men, bro. Happy, <laughs> happy leads for, men. happy There's for a better Jeff Saturday. Winning percentage than Bill Belichick. I that, love, so. I love <laughs> wacky coaches, bro. Nothing is better than a wacky coach, bro. The Detroit Lions hired a wacky coach. Did Jeff, you see Bill, out, or Jeff, Bill Cowher go off on him. Yeah, sadly, I don't get it though. On who, Dan Campbell? No, it makes no the Colts franchise. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes perfect sense why, but like, dude. I, I think, know they won. I mean, so. what's Jeff Saturday? What's Jeff Saturday gonna do? Like Matt turn Ryan down and out? Like why not? Matt Ryan looked good. I like, Jonathan Taylor was like finding his form again. This is Matt, Matt Ryan had a thirty-nine yard run. That's only yeah. two more yards. To than ice years. the game. That's only two to more yards game, than bro. years he's been alive. <laughs> Thirty-seven. He's old as dirt. I don't bro. think a coaching change would have mattered for this Colts team. I think. Matt Ryan was just injured. Sam Ellinger was playing, and so was Jonathan Taylor. Like, yeah, but say, Matt was, Ryan did not. Those look, are your two most important players on the team. Matt Ryan had a better game. I choose to believe that Jeff Saturday is the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> he, dude, I'm telling you, man. Whenever he said he knows how to lead men with such confidence, bro. <laughs> 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 like, I felt led in that moment. I felt. Led. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I, I don't know what I, I don't know what got into me, man. I, I literally was just speaking from the heart. T. Bush was calling him out. He was like, all right, what do you guys do about this game? And I'd sit there. I was like, I don't know, man. I think crazy stuff's about to happen. Like, I picked the Packers because I hate the Cowboys. <laughs> if that happens. No, I think yeah. Like, the Raiders uh, are know, disappointing man. the hell out of me. Like, I don't know what's going on. Welcome to the welcome to the yeah. team. Yeah, I feel very bad for Devontae Adams. He's just stuck there. He played so well. Derek Carr. Throw. He played so well. I know he's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, it doesn't matter. Who Josh Jacobs' is. contract year. Josh Jacobs' contract year has been a. Crazy personal success. That boy is about to command way too much money. <laughs> I know. this year, bro. They're gonna. I think. I think they're gonna pay him um, because he's deserved it. Paying a running back year. hasn't worked out in like the last like like decade, and yeah. teams still continue to do it. Again, look at Josh Jacobs' numbers from this year, and tell me if you're the Raiders that that's not what you want to sign up for at least another year. Yeah, but the point 
it's just how much money you have to commit. It's like there's how much that, cap they eat up. Yeah, and it's not help contributing to winning. I mean, yeah, as good they're as ass. Playing, they're, so, they're two and seven. <laughs> they are ass. They have a first. And I approach. predicted them to win the division. So. That, well, that's just that's a just, stupid pick. Yeah. Like, come it's on. It's not now. though because they the had Chargers and, and the Chiefs. Chiefs and the Broncos were at a better outlook than the Raiders coming into the season, bro. Yeah. Coming we thought season, everyone, everyone thought the Raiders were going to be pre- were going to be pretty. Darren good, to Wall- be fair, Darren Waller hasn't like played half the season. Raiders. Hunter Renfro hasn't played half the season. They still they suck. picked up they still suck. They picked up uh, Chandler Jones. This Raiders team made the playoffs last year. They beat Justin amen, Herbert amen, to get in. Amen. I that's I, why I had so much hope for them. They suck now. I realize that. I bet on the Raiders to make the playoffs last year, and the way that they didn't make the playoffs was so disappointing that I've become an ultimate Raiders hater. Also. <laughs> The reason that the Raiders players always get arrested is because they work and play for a franchise whose logo is a guy with two swords sticking out of his head, bro. That's what it is. They see that shit and they just go crazy. I would hate playing for the Raiders. You have to live in Las Vegas. It's true. Not a lot of people well, you can make, do that. You well, can I mean, then a lot of people oh literally do that. That means you like, can yeah. double your salary making illegal bets on the side. So. Uh, like Calvin tell Ridley. that to Calvin Ridley. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> He's only making one thousand or $100 parlays, though. Now he, has to live, now he has to live in Jacksonville. <laughs> um, that's what that's what that's your punishment for betting on NFL games when you play. I've never like, been to Jacksonville, but I, just, I feel Jaguars. like it smells bad. No, we passed it on the way to Daytona. It's a shithole. Like it's, it's. I bet it smells bad. It's the Cleveland of Florida. It's, um, yeah, it's shout different. out to shout out to Duval County, by the way. Um, <laughs> Duval. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so speaking of picks, uh, pal, we already know you got your lock of the week right. Colts win by five. They cover the spread. We already know I got my lock of the week wrong. Tulane loses to UCF. Money line doesn't hit. T Bush. Yeah, I'd Cowboys minus four and a half. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> rough. Rough week. Yeah. Rough. I don't think Pal's missed on any of his. It was a good week. What can I say? Man? Are you no, three, like, are you three and zero on salty nut locks of the week? All of your locks. So I don't think. No, I think he no, lost, he lost one. one. I think we I went zero and three one. I week. think yeah. I was gonna say, bro. I think we all had that. Own... I didn't want to, but I will say. When I give out locks, guys, just write them down, man. It's free money, bro. I'm like, I sit down and I think about this stuff for you guys. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get you guys some money, bro. Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Any other any other itching points you have from from this Sunday of NFL action? No, bro. I hope that uh, I hope that after after this Bills loss, um, I hope that we look at the season in a different way because we expected this year to kind of be. A Bills chief race coming out of the AFC, and the Dolphins have completely turned that on its head. And in the NFC, there was kind of a kind of a murky picture, but like it's nice seeing the Bucks and Packers lose so much. It's nice seeing the Vikings and Eagles be good, likable teams. So it's been a, it's been a great it's been a great NFL season so far, and this has been one of the best Sundays. Yeah, um, I just want to say the NFL and. NFL has been incredible this year, by the mm-hmm. way. Just like mm-hmm. an awesome year in terms of storylines, all that stuff. Um, as has and the NBA has started off being awesome uh, in terms of storylines and all that stuff. So it's been it's been a great it's, it's a great time for sports right now. Uh, that's what that's what I want to say. Yeah, no. Ever on. since the peak of COVID, football has been crazy. Sports have been crazy in general. But we're talking about how crazy we, sports are. Um, I guess we can kind of announce this now. We we are planning on doing a World Cup. Podcast Wade and I are pretty big soccer fans. I don't know. I don't know if we've like mentioned that on the pod very much, but we we like watching international club football. The World Cup is right around the corner, um, so I think I think we'll do a podcast and have that out there before just previewing the World Cup before Qatar for all the soccer fans out there. Um, if you're a non soccer fan, I will say about the World Cup, watch it. Give it a chance. It's it's how it's how people fall in love with the game. Um, and even if you don't end up like wanting to watch soccer after, a World Cup is is still one of the best things you could do. Especially now that the U.S. is back in it. Um, and this is a this is a unique one. Christmas time. It's like I, I I know that you'll not have anything to watch on TV at 10 yeah. a.m. on Get. Mondays and Tuesdays. So just turn just turn them on. Just turn them on and appreciate um, appreciate just the just the. The energy around those. Get out, get out to a sports bar and watch one of the U.S.'s group stage games, and and just and just go, just go root for America with a bunch of people. There's, USA. We don't, USA. we we don't have enough, we don't have enough uh, experience these days where we're united and we can get get behind the U.S. men's national that's team right. in Qatar, um, <laughs> and have a fun World Cup. But that's Rest all we've got for you um, <laughs> <laughs> for the longest for the longest ever episode of the Breakdown Podcast. Um, that's all we have for you on this Monday edition. If you've made it this far, thank you for listening. Um, We will see you all on Wednesday.